Police investigating the death of a female here at the Willie Mae Pratt Center for Girls. We've got the details, so stay tuned. Also ahead tonight, bandits break into the Haitian embassy. Ahead tonight, could this be linked to the weekend roundups? And we've got the fallout from the weekend of roundups as dozens are taken in. The Bahamas tonight, the national report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. A teen is found dead at the Willie Mae Pratt Center for Girls today. Good evening, everyone. I'm Candino Knowles. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keishla Adderley. Well, authorities are investigating an apparent suicide at the Center for Teens ordered to receive correctional treatment. Arjanea Noel Ferguson was on the scene as police conducted their initial investigation as scores of concerned bystanders looked on. A female juvenile residing at the Willamay Pratt Home for Girls was found today after only being a ward of the state for a week. Her lifeless body was found in one of the rooms here at the home and police say this investigation has now been turned over to Her Majesty's coroner. No cameras were allowed on property as the police converged on the scene and did their work. Shortly after midday, Minister of Social Services and Community Development Melanie Griffin arrived. She spoke with police and other officials before entering the room where officials found the dead girl. A hearse came a short time later and removed the body, escorted out of the compound by police. Now, by that time, a small crowd of onlookers had gathered, curious about what had happened. Chief Superintendent of Police Paul Roll briefed members of the media on their findings. We are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of a young lady here at the Willamette Pratt School. The Her Majesty's Coroner is in charge of this investigation. She was here and the police are assisting her and uh, so we can confirm at this point that a female in ward is deceased and uh, Majesty Coroner will be taking over from here. Now press for more details, Roll said the body was discovered by an official of the center and it appears as if it was a suicide. He says the girl's relatives were contacted, but that was all the information he could give at the time. Now, media members had hoped for a briefing from the social services minister, but we were told by the permanent secretary that a statement would be released soon. Investigations into this matter are ongoing. Janae Noel Ferguson, Zedness Network News. Well, a 28-year-old man is in police custody in connection with the country's latest murder that took place last evening in the area of the caves in western New Providence. Chief Superintendent of Police Paul Roll briefed the media on what police believe may have led to the 99th murder. A motorist was driving along West Bay Street when they observed uh, some activities. Um, what we later learned to be that a male was somehow either parked or had stopped along West Bay Street when persons unknown accosted him in his vehicle. We're not quite certain as to what transacted at that point, but shots were fired and the male who was driving the vehicle attempted to drive off when he lost control of the vehicle and collided into a tree on the opposite side of the street. We made a, officers responded to that scene where they discovered this male suffering from gunshot injuries to the chest. Uh, EMS also visited that scene where they pronounced the male lifeless. 
In other news tonight, around 8.30 this morning, an employee of the Haitian Embassy arrived to work to find that the back door to the Sears Hill building had been breached. They called police and discovered that vandals had broken into every office in the building. Papers had been thrown about, drawers left open, and more importantly, two safes with a significant sum of cash missing. We asked the ambassador if he believed the break-in had anything to do with the recent roundup of illegal immigrants. Rodrigue said at this point, it's hard to pinpoint if the matters are related. You know, maybe the people that take the opportunity, maybe they think we had a lot of money coming here because uh, since the government want all uh, foreigners to have national passport, and in this way, maybe they think that a good moment to come. But uh, I don't relate the exercise to the, that 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 even to, to the exercise. It's too defensive. Uh, and if you can remember, maybe a few weeks ago, the the breaking at the immigration, which is not far from here. I think only thing maybe that area is becoming becoming more and more insecure and unsafe. That was Haitian Ambassador Antonio Rodrigue speaking there. Well, the local Haitian representative is also speaking out on a number of issues impacting the Haitian community as it comes to grips with the enforcement of the immigration policy. Janina Well Ferguson has that story. Unchristian and inhumane. That's how the Haitian Ambassador Antonio Rodrigue described this past weekend's roundup of illegal immigrants, most of whom were Haitians. The ambassador also claimed that embassy officials never received a written notice of the new policy. I have been informed by the minister, but we haven't received any copy, any text of those measures. So we don't know exactly how th th those, uh, those measures uh, are going to be uh, processed. Ambassador Rodrigue also expressed concern about the removal of children by immigration officials on Saturday. That, I think, is a very bad image for the Bahamas. And I can tell you, those images go all, your, all over the world. So I think they have to think again about doing those things. And we have protested many times regarding keeping children in the detention center. In the case of a woman, they say, with, just give birth to a, a, a child. How can that people be at the detention center in that condition? I think you have to have heart, you have to have, you know, uh, humanity, but you have to address the situation of those kids born here, raised here, went to school here, have friends here, and you cannot show them Way like that. He tried to defend the parents of those kids that immigration officials believed abandoned them, saying that they were saving themselves because they knew that other relatives would take care of their children. He also commented on speculation about Haitians planning an uprising. Those who do those things mostly are those born here, raised here, sometimes get the bad manners, uh, you know, with the friend and they spill the, 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 the blame on the whole Asian. Look at the, what happened at the shanty town. The guy who made those comments, he's a Bahamian. He has a Bahamian passport. Born here, raised here, never been to Haiti. But when they're talking, they talk about Haitian. He's not Haitian, he's a Bahamian. People here have to understand that. When you are you have the passport of this country, you have nothing to do with Haiti, so don't come and blame Haitian when things happen because they are Bahamian. Be, 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 be. Meanwhile, he's continuing his call for peace on both sides. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNES Network News. Well, the numbers are in following Saturday's roundup and officer in charge of the raid operation, Commander Kirkland Neely, confirming to ZNS News that 77 illegals were taken into custody this weekend. Of that number, 12 were children. Included in that bunch were Filipino, Haitian, Jamaican and Chinese nationals. Now, 42 of those who were caught up in that raid have since been released. We spoke with one Bahamian during Saturday's roundup who did not want to be pictured on camera but identified himself as Mr. Adderley. He said he's happy the crackdown has begun, but he believes the effort needs to be intensified. They need to step it up like 150%, 100% in weekend. Mm -hmm. And you, you talked to us about the fact that 
the illegals are out and the illegals are being hidden. Tell us about that. What do you mean? What do you? Well, I've been under the bodies on Priscilla, as you can see from my dogs, mm -hmm. and two illegal right inside the house there. Now the illegal come with a passport and other paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is these are going to hide one another. They can cover for one another. Mm -hmm. However you look at it. So it's going to be hard and you said 20,000 here, yeah? over 40,000 Haitians are here. I could carry you through here and you'd be surprised to see them out of the house and illegals in back here. Mm -hmm. And do you think that they have prepared for this day knowing that? They prepared, very prepared. In fact, some next to me, they said, Immigration, hot, hot, hot. He can't catch me. Even the woman said, if I wasn't straight, I would have hide. Well, come tomorrow, the government will shell out close to $65,000 to repatriate 228 Haitian nationals to Port-au-Prince. The nationals will be transported via two Bahamas Air jets. Right now, the Carmichael Road Detention Center is housing 496 migrants well over its capacity. Immigration and Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell reiterates how exercises like these do, in fact, put a strain on the, gov on the department's resources, but maintains it's a problem that it has to be managed over time. We don't have unlimited resources, we don't have unlimited manpower. But the resources that we've been allocated by the parliament and by the government, those, uh, those resources are being uh, applied to the job. And I think that the department has done an excellent job. Uh, they've kept their equanimity throughout the whole exercise. Uh, and I think their work has been stellar and exemplary. This portion of the news is brought to you by Lux Men's Warehouse.